Hi everyone, so a bunch of you who have been following my NBA Sports Analytic Project tutorials have been asking how do we actually scrape ESPN? And so in this video, I wanna go over two of the main ways that I go about scraping ESPN. Um, I'm not gonna go through how to kind of build the entire crawler and clean all the data because that can be very tedious and time consuming, but I do wanna give you guys enough to get started if you do wanna sort of start scraping some other sports for your own sports analytics project. Um, and so the first thing we want to do is we want to jump into our studio and we want to start bringing in the right packages. The first one is our vest. This is going to help us actually scrape HTML data. The second package is going to be dplyr, R, which helps us manipulate data. And then the final package is string R, which is just going to help us deal with text data. Um, so the very next thing we want to do is actually head over to ESPN.com. Um, and what we want to do is we want to click on NBA. I'm going to click on the Sixers, they're my team. You can click on whatever team you want. Um, and then we're going to click, click on the team schedule. Um, and you'll notice on this HTML page, it's a very, very simple page. There is one table, it contains this team schedule and the results and upcoming games. So the first thing we want to do is we want to copy the URL itself. We want to hop back into our studio. We're going to create one variable called schedule URL. We're going to use the function read, HT, oops, read HTML, and we are going to paste the URL that we just copied and save that into a schedule URL. Um, and so what this is basically doing is we're actually, let's go head over to the browser itself. And if we go over to the page, we right click, we say view page source. This is now showing um, the underlying HTML to the page. And so what we're doing with the read HTML function is we're actually just reading in that underlying HTML. And so if we click on the schedule URL, we can see that it's brought in the actual HTML there. Um, and so now the next thing we wanna do is let's create another variable called, I'll call it PHI schedule. And we're gonna start with our schedule URL. We're gonna use the piping function, which is control shift M. If this isn't familiar with you, to you, um, head over to my YouTube channel, check out my basic data manipulation with dplyr and tidyr, where I explain the piping function and some of the dplyr functions. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is HTML node. This is part of the rvest package. We're gonna say table, another piping function, HTML table. Um, and we're gonna say fill equals true. And now let's execute this line with control enter. If we head over to our global environment, we can see that we now have Philadelphia schedule. Let's click on this data frame. It's gonna show up in the viewer. We can now see that we have the Sixers um, entire schedule for the 2021 season in our data frame and so, or in our um, global environment. And so what's basically happening here is we're starting with the HTML we're extracting any nodes that are labeled table. Um, and in this web, in this um, web website, there's really only one table um, in the schedule itself. And basically what this last function is doing is since not all the rows are filled out for all of the observations, um, it's just giving us NAs. So if we scroll down to the games that haven't been played yet, right, they don't actually have these stats um, so we're, we're filling the final column in with NA where they don't actually have this last column. Um, so now, you know, what do we do when our data isn't in this perfect table form? So if we go back to the, uh, if we go back to our browser and we actually look at the table itself, you'll notice that the results is actually a link. It's not just raw data, right? So we brought in the raw data Right. If we look at the results page, it's raw data, but in the HTML page, it's actually the link. And so what if we wanted to actually bring in the link? And so I'm clicking on this here. And if we go to the, if we click on the link, right, it gives us the landing page for this game. And um, specifically within the link, we actually want this game ID. So what if you actually want the game IDs um, and not just the results? So this is data that's embedded in the link. Um, it doesn't come in, come in cleanly through the HTML nodes function of our vest. So what do we do? Um, so let's actually take a look of, at what this data looks like under the hood. So if we copy this little fragment out here, let's actually go to the HTML view and let's actually search for it. And it might be a little hard to see. I'm gonna try and zoom in here on it. Um, so bear with me for one second. 
And so what you'll see is this is giving us the link itself within the HTML. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to extract any data that is in between the text game ID equals and a double quote. That's going to give us all of the game IDs for the Sixers for this season. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is we're going to hop back over into R. You're going to create another variable called game IDs. And we're going to start with schedule URL another piping function str extract all this is part of our stringer package and within the str, uh, str extract all function we're going to do open and close single quotes it's very important that it's single quotes here um and then what we're going to do is we are going to do open and close oh, open and close parens open and close parens open and close parens so we're going to do this three times and what we're putting in this statement here is going to be what's called a regular expression statement and what that does is it helps you deal with text data and helps you extract sort of specific data from text data so in this case we want to extract any information that is between game id and an end paren so the way we go about doing that is and it looks a little funny because it's a regular expression function um you know, if you want to research that on your own, go for it. But I'm going to kind of give you the, the short answer here. So we're going to use question mark less than simple equals game ID equals in this first set of parens. In the next set of parens, we're going to say dot star question mark. And then in the last set of parens, we're going to say question mark equals double quotes. Uh, so let's execute that line. And if we look at game IDs, Okay, we can see we have a number of game IDs. A number of these have been duped though, and so we just kind of want a um, unique list. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do another piping function, unlist, another pipe, unique, um, and then let's re-execute this line. And if we look at game IDs, now we can see that we have a unique list of all of the games in the Sixers regular season, which is pretty awesome. And so the way I would go about building a crawler from this is I would actually loop and I'm not going to get into this here, but I would actually loop through all of these game IDs and I would go to the various pages on ESPN that are related to this game ID. And I'm very zoomed in here. Give me one second. Um, so I, I would basically use this game ID to take anything that's on the team stats page, anything that's on the play by play, play page, anything that's on the box score page. And that's how I went about building the data set. And again, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of building the crawler and cleaning the data. Um, but this is just an idea for you guys to take for your own sports analytics projects. And I think it's going to be very, very helpful because this is basically going to work on any data um, that you can find on ESPN. Now, the one last thing I do want to show you is um, in the first example, we showed what happens if you just scrape for one for an HTML page that has one table. Right, so the schedule for the Sixers just had one main table, uh, but if you go to something like the team stats, there's multiple tables. So there's gonna there's a table up here with a box score. Um, you know, there's tables to the side with some some other stats. Um, but the main thing that we're gonna want from this is are these team stats right here. Um, so the way we would go about scraping um, a website or a page, I should say. I mean, because we're pretty much exclusively working with ESPN at this point. So the way we go about scraping a page with multiple tables is we're gonna first copy out the URL. Uh, we're gonna head back into our studio. I'm gonna create a variable called team stats URL read HTML, um, just like I did for the, the um, schedule, right? And then we're gonna paste in that URL. This is gonna bring in the underlying HTML then we are going to create another variable called PHI team stats. And I should actually probably be using PHL. I think that's their, their label on the, or no, actually it looks like it is PHI. Okay. So I got that right. Sometimes they label Philadelphia PHI, sometimes PHL, you know, you know, you never know. Um, so anyway, keep going here. We're going to then bring in the team stats URL. HTML nodes, we're going to basically do the same thing that we did up here, right? Actually, we can, we can pretty much just copy this out. The only thing that we're changing though is up here we did node. Here we want to do nodes, plural, because there's multiple tables. So let's execute this line. Um, and if we double click on P 
PHI team stats, right? Execute that. You'll notice we got four different tables. So we got that box score up top. We got the actual team stats. And then we pulled in some other, you know, it looks like the, um, the, the standings for each division. Um, and so we actually just want the team stats. So the way we would subset that is we would start with, and we'll just resave it into this team stats variable. We'll start with team stats. We'll do double brackets. It's our second table, right? The first table was box score. Second table is our team stats. Um, so we're going to put a two in double brackets, control enter. And now our team stats is just this one data frame. Um, hope you guys found this interesting. Um, you know, leave a comment, like it, you know, feel free to share it. I hope it helped. Um, and, you know, I'm going to try to get back on a regular schedule for cranking out some of these videos. I've been a little neglig negligent. A lot of you have been very patient. I appreciate that. Um, so hopefully there should be more to come in the near future. All right. See you guys.